Hey skincare nerds, welcome back. Summer's almost here, so today we're gonna talk about sunscreens. This is one of the most requested topics that y'all wanted me to cover. So behind the scenes, I've been testing 26 different sunscreens over three months. The reason why I've gone so deep into this is because sunscreen is the most important step in your routine. It's the absolute best skincare product you can use to prevent the signs of aging, and it also helps to prevent hyperpigmentation too. It's also so important for your skin health and prevent skin cancer. But it can be really hard to find a sunscreen that actually works for you. So I'm gonna break down not one, not two, but 11 different sunscreens for every skin type and tone. So are you ready for the ultimate sunscreen video of 2021? Let's get into it. Before we get into it, let's grab some tea from our sponsor first. So thanks Peak Tea for sponsoring this video. We talk a lot about skincare products you can apply, but an important part of taking care of your skin is also about eating right and thinking about nutrition. This matcha tea from Peak is ceremonial grade, meaning it's the highest quality matcha. You can drink it without putting in a lot of milk and you can still get a really nice flavor from it. Plus, it's ultra clean. They've put their matcha under four different types of tests for contaminants, so it's the most pure matcha. Matcha has a ton of antioxidants since the leaves are ground into a fine powder, so you're getting the full benefit of consuming the entire leaf. Antioxidants protect your skin from free radicals and sun damage, which which keeps your skin looking much more healthy. So I've actually switched over to drinking matcha after 1 p.m. instead of coffee since I don't really like the hard crash that you get from coffee. Plus, how I like to make it for the summer is really, really easy. I just grab a water bottle, add some cold water, maybe some ice, and then pour a pouch of this matcha into it and shake it up. And it's the easiest way to drink matcha because you don't need a whisk, you don't need a bowl, nothing. You can also have it hot like in a latte or add it into a smoothie. Look in the description box below if you're interested in getting some peak tea for yourself use my coupon to get a discount off of your first order again thanks to peak tea for sponsoring this video back to the sunscreens okay so now we've got our matcha fix let's talk about what you should look for in a sunscreen so you can find the best one for your skin at a minimum look for an SPF of 30 plus and broad spectrum protection so with SPF 30 it would take you 30 times longer to burn than if you weren't wearing sunscreen at all and broad spectrum protection just means you're protected against both harmful UVA and UVB rays Asian sunscreens usually rely instead on PA ratings based on the persistent pigmentation darkening test, so how much more UVA radiation your skin can withstand before tanning with the sunscreen on. That rating range goes from PA plus to PA plus 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 plus, which is the most protective. So the next thing you should figure out is if you want a chemical or physical sunscreen. So you can think of physical sunscreen filters like a wall blocking out the UV rays while chemical sunscreens absorb into your skin and neutralize the sun's rays by changing them into heat instead and releasing them from your skin. Physical filters are minerals like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, which is why they're marketed as mineral sunscreens. Zinc is great for oilier and acne-prone skin because it's anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, and regulates oily skin. Physical filters are also great for sensitive skin and rosacea, plus they're effective immediately. And non-nano zinc oxide and titanium dioxide are also reef safe. But the downside to physical sunscreens is that the texture of them can kind of be like a little bit thick and a little bit pasty. Physical sunscreens can also be harder to blend and you definitely need a mirror to apply them. They also can leave a white cast. If white cast is an issue for you, I'd normally recommend a tinted mineral sunscreen instead, but so many brands only have just one tint. So if any of these brands are watching this, can you please offer more than one shade? If you do have darker skin, I generally wouldn't recommend untinted physical sunscreens unless you're going to apply a makeup on top. Moving on to chemical sunscreen. So there are a lot more chemical filters, but which ones you can buy really depends on where you live, since some countries have heavier regulation. In the US, 
Sunscreen is actually classified as a drug and regulated by the FDA, so not all of the filters have been approved. The good thing about chemical sunscreens is they don't have a white cast and they usually have a really nice lightweight texture that absorbs really easily into your skin. The downside though is some of the chemical filters can irritate sensitive skin and can even sting or burn a little bit. So if you do have sensitive skin, a physical sunscreen is definitely going to be a safer bet for you. Another thing is if you have a sensitive nose like I do, they can sometimes smell a little bit like new car or like gasoline a little bit. Another concern of course is reef safe sunscreen. Reef safety is obviously really important, so if you're going into the ocean and you want something reef safe, look for a sunscreen without oxybenzone and octinoxate. All right, so now that we've talked about what to look for in a sunscreen, let's finally talk about some sunscreens. So let's start with one that's good for all skin types and all skin tones and really easily accessible around the world. I'm not saying this is the best one overall, but it is the most crowd pleasing. So the La Roche-Posay and Thelios 60 Melt-In Sunscreen Milk. This should be more reef friendly because it's oxybenzone free and it doesn't have any octinoxate in it either. It's fragrance free, but it does have a little bit of that new car smell to it. But this is gonna work for all skin types. And even though chemical sunscreens can sometimes sting on sensitive skin, this has been tested on sensitive skin and it's sensitive skin friendly. So let's check out the texture. It's really nice and lightweight and it rubs in. Okay, I put a lot on my hand. <laughs> so it rubs in really easily and at first it does come across as kind of like really thick white cast, but it actually does disappear really well into the skin. So there is no white cast because it is a chemical sunscreen and it leaves like a nice velvety finish that just disappears into your skin. So overall, I think this is a great crowd-pleasing sunscreen that's great for most people, no matter your skin tone, no matter your skin type. Plus, it's also water resistant for 80 minutes and you do get a nice big size of it at 150 milliliters, so that will last you a while. And you can use it on your face or your body as well. So I still think that's pretty good value, even at over $30. This will last you a long time. But there are other sunscreens that are probably gonna be better for you if you have more specific skin concerns. So if you're acne prone, one of the ones I would recommend is the Ulta MD Skincare UV Clear SPF 46. This is a pretty unique sunscreen since it is a mixed chemical and physical sunscreen. So it's got two layers of protection and it's great if you have hyperpigmentation. It's got a few other ingredients in it as well that I really love like niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, and lactic acid as well as that zinc oxide which is going to give you some of that anti-inflammatory, antibacterial and oil controlling properties. The formulation overall is oil free, fragrance free, and they do have a tinted as well as this untinted version. The sunscreen is vegan friendly. However, Alta MD, I can't say it's fully cruelty free. As far as the smell goes for sunscreen, it's really not that bad. As for the texture, it's pretty lightweight. It can be like a little bit gloopy and at first there is a white cast but it does disappear and it feels kind of like watery as it absorbs in but it does rub in really well and for a hybrid physical sunscreen I would say that there is very very minimal white cast to it and the finish is really sheer and it just feels like your skin really. So overall I absolutely love the sunscreen. I'm almost done this one. It used to be my OG for years and years and I've recently gone back to it because honestly it just feels so nice on your skin. I love the niacinamide in it. There's a mix of both chemical and physical sunscreens. I love that it just feels like you're wearing absolutely nothing. I love this especially in the summer. But I also wanted to give you guys a budget friendlier option as well. If you're not willing to shell out over $30 for a sunscreen that's totally okay. Try Neutrogena's clear face breakout free oil free sunscreen instead. This is a chemical sunscreen so it's not going to leave a white cast or on your skin so it's great for darker skin tones plus it's oil free and fragrance free as well so let's check it out it does smell a little bit like has that like new car smell to it so the texture is quite light and almost watery if you can see that there is like an initial white cast but that totally disappears 
and it leaves more of like a matte kind of finish. So it's great if you have really oily skin. This is also great because it's water resistant for up to 80 minutes and it also doesn't have oxybenzone or octinoxate in it. So it is gonna be reef friendly, but sadly Neutrogena isn't cruelty free. Overall, I think this is a great option for you if you do have oilier skin and you're afraid of breakouts when you're applying sunscreen or if you have oilier skin and a darker skin tone. Plus it's great for the summer because it is water resistant. So if you do tend to sweat, this is gonna stay on your skin and protect you a little bit more. Overall, a great budget friendly option if you have oily skin or are acne prone. If you have really oily skin and you're looking for a cruelty-free, ocean-friendly, and vegan sunscreen, then I would recommend the Clean Screen Mineral SPF 30 from REN. So this one is a purely physical sunscreen. It's completely zinc-based, so it's great if you have really oily skin or if you're acne prone as well and you're looking for something extremely mattifying. So this one is fragrance-free as well. So it has like a slight lemony smell to it. Guys, I'm running out of real estate space on my arm. Um, I'm just gonna apply it there. So it does start off extremely opaque and it does take a little bit more effort to rub in. And I do think that this leaves like a little bit of a white cast. You need to really work it in. The finish of this is going to be extremely matte. So that's why I would recommend it for someone with really oily skin. Overall, I would not recommend this if you do have medium or a darker skin tone since this does have a bit of a white cast to it and it will take a lot of time for you to rub this in. Moving on to another good choice for oily skin, the Paula's Choice Youth Extending Daily Hydrating Fluid Broad Spectrum SPF 50. So with this one, because the name has daily hydrating fluid in it, you'd think that it's for drier skin, but it's actually formulated for oilier skin. It's also an oil free formula. It also has vitamin E and oat and green tea extracts as well as other antioxidant containing extracts. So in terms of the smell, it's not too bad. It's fragrance free, of course, but you can tell this one's really watery, like how it runs down my hand. And there's that initial white cast, but it rubs in really well. It's really watery, it's oil-free, non-greasy, and it just kind of soaks right in and leaves like a semi-matte finish, which is why it's really great for oilier skin types. Overall, I think this is a really great pick for you if you do have oily skin. Comparing it against the Neutrogena, I would say that this has a much more watery, lightweight texture that absorbs really nicely. I would say that this is a little bit more cosmetically elegant in how they formulated it, but this is also a really great option if you're looking for something that's more mattifying and also more budget friendly. Okay, but what if you have dry skin? So for dry skin, I would recommend the Biosense Squalane Plus Zinc Sheer Mineral Sunscreen with broad spectrum SPF 30 protection. So the filter in here is non-nano zinc oxide, making it reef safe, but it's also great as an anti-inflammatory as well. Zinc can be a bit drying, so they've also added squalane into this formula, which mimics your skin's natural oils to help moisturize, making it really good if you have dry skin. This is also sensitive skin and rosacea friendly, plus it's vegan and cruelty free. So let's try it out. So it has kind of a texture of like a luxurious moisturizer and okay, I applied way too much, but <laughs> you can see there's a little bit of a white cast on it at first and it does spread really easily. As you can see, like it's not dragging against my skin. It does take a little bit to rub in cause I probably put too much on my arm, but it does absorb and the white cast disappears. For a physical sunscreen, I would say that this does blend really, really well and really, really easily, and it leaves kind of like a nice glowy finish. But what about white cast on darker skin tones? Does it look ashy? So this YouTuber that goes by the style and beauty doctor, she's a awesome black female creator. She's tried this on and it didn't give her too much of a white cast. So I do think that this is a good physical sunscreen option for you if you have a darker skin tone. I'll link to her video down below if you guys wanna check it out. So overall, I think 
think this is a great option for you if you do have dry skin because obviously it's got the squalene in there and it's really sheer. It doesn't really leave much of a white cast and it blends really easily. But if you're looking for a more budget-friendly option or if dehydration is more of your concern, then I would recommend Isentree's Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. It's got eight different types of hyaluronic acid in it, which of course is a humectant that draws moisture into your skin. I actually love this for almost anyone. It's such a good sunscreen. All of my friends really like this one too. Even the ones that don't like sunscreen. <laughs> There's also niacinamide, ceramides, and centella asiatica in it, which are great for skin soothing, brightening, and skin barrier repair. It does have a little bit of that new car smell to it, but the texture is quite light and it's very easy to blend in. It's a chemical sunscreen, so it's really not gonna leave much of a white cast at all. And it kind of leaves this like really nice, glowy, dewy type of finish. Oh, and I should mention it's SPF 50 plus with the PA plus 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 rating, so the highest rating. And it's cruelty free and vegan friendly also. Overall, I really, really love this one if you're looking for a really glowy, dewy finish. Okay, moving on. If you have really sensitive skin and a lot of different sunscreens sting, your best bet is to go with a physical sunscreen just in case. So that could be the Biosense if your skin leans drier, or it could be the REN or Elta MD one if your skin is oilier. Those options are also cruelty-free, but if you're looking for a more budget-friendly option, one of them is gonna be the CeraVe Hydrating sunscreen series. So they do have three different ones, two SPF 30s, one tinted, one untinted, and a SPF 50. They have ones for the face as well as for the body, so it can get really confusing. Overall, the Hydrating Sunscreen Series from CeraVe is sensitive skin friendly with titanium dioxide and a bit of zinc as well. It's not overly mattifying, but it's also non-greasy and also has niacinamide and ceramides in it as well. They are physical sunscreens, so they are gonna have like a little bit of a white cast except for the tinted version. That tinted version, CeraVe, if you are watching this, can we please come out with more shades because skin tones are not just one shade. So I'm gonna show you guys the SPF 50 for face, but honestly the SPF 30 and 50 are really, really similar. They have a very similar white cast and everything, so I think it's gonna be pretty indicative. All right, so this is a mineral sunscreen. This kind of smells like minerally a little bit, not like gasoline or anything. So it does go on quite thick, kind of like toothpaste-y, and you can see like the white cast. It does spread well, but you gotta rub it in a lot. It does leave a white cast. So I would not recommend this if you have a darker skin tone, but when you do finally rub it in, it does feel really nice. It feels velvety and not too heavy, but like a tiny bit sticky. So overall, I would recommend this to you if you have really sensitive skin and you're looking for something budget friendly. Of course, this can work for you as well if you have balanced skin. And it goes on lightweight, it's non-greasy, but it takes a lot of time to rub it in and it still does leave a little bit of a white cast. So if you don't like white cast at all, this is not the sunscreen for you. I would not recommend this for you if you do have a darker skin tone. Okay. Okay, so as you guys know, since you have pointed it out on my CeraVe videos, CeraVe is unfortunately not cruelty-free, so I wanted to give you guys a budget-friendly, cruelty-free option, and that's this Baby Bum one, which is a mineral SPF 50 broad-spectrum protection sunscreen that's fragrance-free and is water-resistant for 80 minutes. This is vegan as well, by the way, so that's another plus. This is marketed towards babies, but if you have sensitive skin or you prefer fragrance free products in general, always go for the baby friendly version because it's mostly gonna be fragrance free. I do wanna flag that it does have coconut oil in it and coconut oil can be comedogenic, meaning it can clog your pores. So I would not recommend this if you are acne prone. Let's test it out. Ooh. It has like a faint coconutty smell to it, I think and it looks a little bit like toothpaste right out of the bottle. You can see that it's quite opaque, so it spreads well, but it is taking a long time to rub it in, and it does leave slight white cast, 
and it's a little bit sticky because of the coconut oil, but it blends pretty easily for a physical sunscreen, and it leaves kind of like a semi-glowy finish. Overall, if you do have sensitive skin and you're looking for a sunscreen that's fragrance-free and cruelty-free as well as affordable, this could be the sunscreen for you. However, I have to say that it's not my favorite because they used the coconut oil in here and that could clog your pores. So if you do have acne prone skin, I would not recommend this. So now that we've gone over all of my recommendations for your skin type and also any skin concerns you might have, but you guys know me, I go super in depth with everything. So I can't do a sunscreen video without talking about Supergoop's Unseen Sunscreen. Is it overhyped? So this sunscreen is good for all skin types, skin tones, and sensitive skin friendly as well. It's oil free, water resistant, and slightly mattifying, which makes it great for a sweaty summer day. And it's also got reef friendly chemical filters in it too. But I really just don't like it. Why? Well, the reason is it's got a really heavy silicone base and I just personally don't love that oily gel texture and I think it does smell a little bit too much like gasoline. So I just want to say that silicones are not evil categorically, it's just that I personally don't like how they feel. However, it can be great for you if you don't mind or even like that silicone texture and you're looking for something maybe to double up as your makeup primer as well. The silicone in here is actually going to smooth out your skin a little bit temporarily. It won't settle into any fine lines if you have them. Just to illustrate what I mean, it smells whew, it's a really strong hit of gasoline and you can see that oily gel texture it spreads on really well like a gel, but it's got this like really greasy feeling to it even though it's oil free because of that silicone texture, but it does smooth out your skin and the finish on this is a semi matte which again is great for a sweaty summer day. One thing you should keep in mind if you like the sunscreen, because it is very silicone heavy, it could cause some pilling. So to prevent that, just make sure that all the other layers in your routine are fully dried before you apply this on top. Overall, I think it's a fine choice if you really like silicones, but I really wish it was more affordable and you know, had a few other skin friendly ingredients in it at that price. If you're gonna go for the unseen sunscreen, I would honestly recommend CeraVe's Ultra Light Moisturizing Lotion instead. It's a much more affordable choice that can double as a moisturizer and makeup primer as well. Plus, it's got hyaluronic acid and ceramides in it too, so it does have other ingredients that are really great for your skin as well. So it's also a chemical sunscreen, so it's got that kind of new car smell to it, but it is pretty lightweight. It spreads really, really well, and it leaves just like a really nice moisturizing light finish that's really, really sheer. Plus, because it is a chemical sunscreen, it doesn't leave a white cast. So overall, comparing these two sunscreens, I would say that this one has more of a semi-matte finish, while this one is more of a velvety finish. If you really like the Unseen sunscreen from Supergoop, and you really like that it kind of disappears into your skin, it doesn't really feel like you're wearing something that's like heavy and white and pasty, then I really would suggest that you try out the CeraVe's Ultra Light Moisturizing Lotion instead. It's much more affordable. Plus, it's got a ton of really skin-friendly ingredients as well, like hyaluronic acid and ceramides. Okay, so we went through a lot today. We went through 11 different sunscreens, but I wanted to leave you guys with a couple other tips that you can use to protect yourself from the sun. So the first tip is you can wear a hat. I found this really cute one from Solid and Striped here in New York City and I've been wearing it like every day. It also protects my scalp and it's got a really nice wide brim on it. Tip number two is adding a serum with vitamin C or another antioxidant to your morning routine because that can boost the effectiveness of your sunscreen overall. Okay, so that's it from me. Thanks so much for watching. I know I'm ready for a hot girl summer, so I hope this video was helpful for you in preparing for yours. If it was, don't forget to give your girl a like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any more informative and fun skincare videos like this one. See you next time.